Hi guys, welcome to 6.2 Subtraction with Unlike Denominators. The essential question is how can you use models to, sub to uh, subtract fractions that have different denominators? Uh, once again, just like with the addition, we're not going to do the models in the video. We will be doing the models in class. So the steps are almost the exact same as the addition steps. You've got to find the common denominator, and then you subtract the numerators only. The denominator stays the same. And in case you forgot, what's the numerator, what's the denominator? Okay, if I have one half, the one here is the numerator. Okay. Okay. I'll put an end for that. Let me get a little bit neater than that, though. Okay. And then the two here is the denominator. Okay. So that's the difference between the two. Okay. So the denominator, that's this one stays the same. So let's go ahead and um, talk about how to find the common denominator once again. Okay, it's the same as the other rules, so um, I would write it a second time though just because it's always good to have. But does the number go into the other? Is there a multiple of the two numbers that they, um, they can both go in? And crisscross butterfly, which we've talked about in the previous video. Whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. Just remember those rules. Okay, if you need to pause and write that down, please go ahead and do so now. So if we paused, let's go ahead. These are the only two examples we're going to be doing. If you want to pause and, and uh, write those down, go ahead and do so. I will not be going back to this page. I'm going to stay on my blackboard so that way we can just get straight to the next problem. So, pause now. Hopefully you paused. The first example, Mario fills a hummingbird feeder with three-fourths cups of sugar water on Friday. On Monday, Mario sees that one-eighth cups of sugar water is left. How much sugar water did the hummingbirds drink? So looking at this problem, okay, they're asking you to subtract. Okay, and you're going to be subtracting three-fourths minus one-eighth. Okay, so you want to ask, does, do any of these numbers go into each other? Well, I can see here that the four goes into the eight. You just have to multiply to get from the 4 to the 8, you have to multiply it by 2. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take 3 fourths. Let's multiply 4 by 2. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top and multiply the 3 by 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 2 is 8. So now we could do 6 over 8 minus 1 over 8. And that gets us 5 over 8. Okay? And that would be our final answer. Now, if you want to do the butterfly method, you could 3 over 4 minus 1 over 8, and you will still get, it might be a different answer. Okay, let's go ahead and look. 3, so we're going to do 3 times 8, 4 times 8, 1 times 4, 8 times 4. Okay, 3 times 8 is 24, 4 times 8 is 32, 4 times 1 is 4, 8 times 4 is 32, and then we do... 24 over 32 minus 4 over 32, which gets us 20 over 32. Now, this answer is the exact same as um, the previous one, which was 5 over 8. And I can show you that in just a second. So let me go ahead and erase that. So 20 over 32 is the same as 5 over 8. Okay? Um, and you can see that because if you were to multiply 5 and 8 times 4 you would get 20 over 32. So these are what is known as equivalent fractions. It's when the fractions are actually the same, okay? So they're, they're known as equivalent fractions when the, fra when the numerator and denominator are equivalent to another numerator and denominator. And you can tell that because if you were just to divide 20 by 4 and 32 by 4, you would get 5 over 8. Okay, so that makes them equivalent. Don't worry too much about equivalent fractions. I'm just showing you that even if you did the butterfly method, you would still get the right answer. It's just not in simplest form, which, once again, we haven't talked about. So don't be too concerned about that. But if you have any questions, please make sure you write them down. All right, the last example is 2 thirds minus 1 over 6. Now, I'm going to say, okay, I know 3 goes into 6 two times. So I'm going to do 2 times 2 and 3 times 2. And the reason I multiply the 2 by 2 is because whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top, okay? So 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6, so I'm going to take 4 over 6 minus 1 over 6, and that gets me 3 over 6. 
okay? With equivalent fractions, don't worry about that because when we do the hands-on activities, you will start to see using the fraction bars and the different manipulatives, you'll start to see that, oh yeah, these fractions are actually the same. So don't worry about that with the models. Just know that you could solve it a number of ways, and even though the answers aren't exactly the same, the fractions are still equivalent. So 3 over 6 would be it. Now, if you did this, the butterfly method, okay, if you did 2 over 3 minus 1 over 6, and you did 2 times 6, 3 times 1, right, it would be 2 times 6, 3 times 6, which equals 12 over 18, okay, and it would be... Um, 1 times 3 and 6 times 3 which would equal 3 over 18 and then when you did 12 over 18 minus 3 over 18 that would get you 9 over 18 okay which would be the same as 3 over 6 3 over 6 is the same as 9 over 18 because if you were to multiply these by 3 it would still equal the same as this okay so those fractions are equivalent to each other. All right. Once again, don't worry too much about that. I'm just telling you that th both those answers are correct. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please make sure you write them down. Hopefully with the modeling and, the, and using the manip manipulatives, it will go a lot easier. But, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good one.